Well, hey, hey, everybody. Monkey Puzzle here with episode seven of Arc Aberration on the Iron Mine community server. What is up? And I have the cutest hat ever. <laughs> Thanks to Urmandin. I love this. I think I am not going to be able to take this off. <laughs> so anyway, today we are going to do some building with stone cliff platforms. That's right. So I did an episode previously where I, I stuck these in the wall here and I'll link here if you want to see how to do that. There was a little bit of nuance to placing them. They needed to be on a vertical surface. They liked it better if you were hanging from a pick or from a zip line. They wanted you to be above them. And there's no exact snap points on the cliffs for them to go. You can kind of place them anywhere, kind of within those guidelines that I just mentioned. So yeah, go ahead and check out that link if you want to see exactly how to place them. So yeah, in that video, I put down this one and I put down this one. I'm not sure if I had put that one down too, but you can span builds across these and they will all support the weight together. So even though they're kind of small, they are smaller than the tree platforms by quite a bit actually, but you can work sideways like this. And so you kind of limited in how much you can go out, but not limited at all in how much you can go to the side. And you can also stack them vertically too. I've seen some neat builds like that already and we will get there. But first I just wanted to do some of the basics with you all just on this one level and see what we can do with them and just share with you all some of the things that I've been figuring out. Also in that episode, I went ahead and I built this wood elevator platform, which is very cool. Um, it's a little clunky. It's got this little gear mechanism and it takes forever to bring the dinos up. I just brought some of these guys up because they were loaded with materials so that I'd have enough stuff up here. Real quick before we begin building, I just want to show you what I did with the bottom part. And they go down pretty quickly. That part's not so bad. So just release it and they let themselves down. And so I had built a little ramp down there in order to be able to get the dinos up because this wouldn't go quite all the way to the ground. It clips on the rock right there and gets stuck, but that was fine. I was able to ramp up to it. And since I saw you guys, I went ahead and turned the ramp into a little mini base down here because sometimes it's hard to bring everything down there. So woo, we got two bulb dogs glowing right here. It's a little bright, um, but it's going to be dark elsewhere. <laughs> so it's a little hard to manage the light levels for video on Aberration, but uh, we'll do our best. So yeah, I got a place that I can directly unload down here. And like I said I was going to do, I made a whole little pen area down here. So I've got this wall that goes around and then a couple behemoth gates. And I've still got resources spawning in here, which is good because I can come and knock these down and such. I did a little design for the top of this where I can come on up here and I get this little area if I want to shoot down at something. And then I've got catwalks across the top. And then a little double railing, um, mainly just to add a little interest on the top so it's not too boring. I still want to decorate it some more, but it works so I have a safe place. And then I went ahead and actually ran a pipe over to the river over there. So now I've actually got running water, <laughs> which is awesome. And I did it with S plus, so I was able to hide the pipes and they come all the way over there. Oh, you might need to join us there, a little Lystro. And the, so there's this one over here too. And with the way that you use water up on here, it's great to have that. So when I want to come back up, I've got multiple zip lines. This is the closest one right here. Let's see if I can pull it off the first try. I can. And so this one goes almost vertically and the zip lines go so fast. It's pretty cool. So I get up here and I jump. So this is my next little innovation I made of a way to do this. It doesn't work as well with a bunch of ravagers. It will work with one. 
Um, but this is just something. And then before, of course, I've been using plenty of the pillars with the zip lines. So as far as building on these, there's a lot of things you can do. They don't have snap points, so you can really do whatever you want. Some people really don't like not having snap points on them, and it does make it a little bit more challenging, uh, but I really like it because it allows you more creative freedom at the price of a little bit more difficulty, but if there were snap points on it, it would just be kind of plug and play, and everybody would be building the same platform. So anyway, there's infinite ways you can go about this. What I'm going to do is I actually really like the stone texture on them, and I don't really want to discover them up completely. So I'm going to build in a style that leaves this stone part exposed because I like it. I did go ahead and cover the center with some of these. Gosh, it's so bright. I've got to gam it up a little bit. Um, but... Yeah, when you got two bulb dogs going on. Basically, I was just covering over this mesh area, and I wanted to make a place that I can log off, because at least the way it worked with the tree platforms, if you log off with your character just on the bare platform, when you log back in, you tend to fall through to your death. <laughs> or sometime in between when you log off and when you log in. So definitely need some foundation. So again, I was using S+. Plus which works really well with these because it um, has triangles. And these are not square, obviously. They are a 12-sided shape, and you can make 12-sided shapes just natively with Structures Plus. If you don't have Structures Plus, if you're unofficial or on an unofficial that's unmodded um, power to you, it's just going to be a little bit more difficult to come up with a shape that really fits in here. You'll have to overlap foundations uh, which you could do it's just a little difficult because they will not uh, have collision with each other nowadays but they will um, you'll have a hard time with the snap points because you can't turn those off um, anyway there's multiple ways you can do that I just made a little circle in there because I could with S plus but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a method very similar um, to the one that I did with the redwood treehouse when the Treehouse platforms first came out. Um, so I'm going to use stone fence foundations on the perimeter. And that's going to allow me to build outwards. My goal here is to make this a little bit bigger than it is right now. So I have a little bit more space to work with. You could just as well use these to build inward. Because um, foundations can be a little clunky on them. Let's see if we can get a look underneath this way. The, these uh, platforms are not very thick, and so the foundations will protrude either way above them or way below them. I did sink these foundations um, so that they uh, would kind of fit a little bit better and you wouldn't have a big bump going over there. But anyway, so yeah, I placed down fence foundations like this. Now, this is the first sign, besides just obviously looking at it, that we are working with something much smaller than the redwood, the redwood uh, the tree platforms, because those were a little bit more than three across this way, where these are just a little bit more than two across. So you can see, you can fit two in there. This one, I didn't place as well. You can see that Generally, and it doesn't seem like it's exact. It does vary from thing to thing, so that will drive you mad a little bit too. But most of the time, if you put the fourth little circle on the stone uh, fence... Uh, <laughs> all these words. Uh, the stone fence foundation, um, right so that it just ends at this little knob here, and do the same on the other side, that's pretty much as close as you can get to exactly centered. So we can go ahead and place one over here. I've already got most of them down because it's kind of a maddening thing to do. Now also S plus will, it will um, give you an arrow like that that shows you what's the outside. So I can go ahead and use that. And I've just been getting into third person here and just getting it so I just lose the inside edge of that circle. And then hopefully that's close enough. 
Now, if it is close enough, generally that works out just fine. And then the next one should snap. So there we go. And you'll see if it ended up not exact, but pretty close. So obviously some of them are a little shorter in between. It's probably also affected a little bit by your angle and how far out towards the edge or inward you are. But I'm going to call that good enough for today too. Honestly, you won't really be able to tell once you get going. Now, so you can see I've built out with these. To do that, you need to first place a wall like that. I'm actually using these S plus walls. Um, well, they're not walls, they're double doors. And I'm just using them because I can go through them, but you can do it just fine with just regular uh, vanilla walls. These are S plus walls, but they're gonna work the same way too. Now, to build out, it won't work yet like that. There's several things you could do. I think if you just go ahead for vanilla, and if you go ahead and put some of these pillars out, that gives this foundational support. Now the S plus fence foundations and the vanilla ones work a little bit differently, but they're not too far um, apart. Now you still cannot place a ceiling right there. There's two things you can do. You can either come from the bottom like this and go ahead and place a wall like that. It's the same way that walls work usually. They won't snap um, or, you know, snapping ceilings to walls work usually. You can't snap a ceiling underneath one wall, but if you put another one going down, then you can. So this should work now. So you can do that. Or the other thing that I found that works, uh, either way you're using extra pieces, of course, is you come out like that, and then you come down. Uh, let me see, this is number four. And then you come down again, and then you come in. And I'm using these. So either way works. Now, again, with the vanilla fence foundations, you're going to need to have these pillars for this to work at all. I'm doing S+, plus, so I can actually pick these up, and this is not going to get demolished. I don't need them, and I'm not going to use them because I want to have as much open space on the interior. If you're doing this in vanilla, you're going to have to have at least a column there and a column there. So you'll need some columns on the inside. Those will come in handy when you're building a ceiling over the top, if you build a ceiling over the top. Um, but for me... I'm not going to use those right now. So let me see. I can go ahead now and take most of this stuff off. This can go. Now in uh, S plus here, I do have the demo gun to pick stuff up, but you have to be very careful because if I shot this right now, right now the demo gun does work on these stone cliff platforms, which is kind of handy if you put them down and you place them uh, in a way you don't like the first time. Unfortunately, I learned the hard way. I was just picking parts up and I destroyed this whole thing and had to get all my stuff back from the loot bags really quickly. So if you use this up here, you got to be super careful. So generally, if I'm too close to the platform, I f prefer just to use the menu to pick things up like that. And then we don't need those anymore, so we can go ahead and pick those up. So. Make sure you're not pointing at your elevator shaft or, you know, that you don't have any of the platform in line of sight. And then, let me see, this is dangerous, but, uh, whew, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I, with the S+, Plus, you can do this. And one more time, with the vanilla, I would still have to have the pillars on there. So now I'm going to come out again, and it's just your typical... Uh, foundation rules we did not change or, or turn off the need for foundation support so we can come out too now you can still place a not that but the uh, what do I want I want that you still can place a rail or something else out there a wall when you've just come out too um, but that's going to be your limit now the trick with this is what do you do with this space in the middle so you can just try to fill it in so if you do that 
And then that, you know, it's not the worst, it's not the best. I don't particularly care for it. And then you could do that and... Oh yeah, uh, Structures Plus has a thing where it won't won't cover over uh, other pieces of itself sometimes when it thinks they're the same piece in the same place. So I think I've got some vanilla ones here. So let's go ahead and put those, like say, there for now. And you shouldn't have that problem if you're using vanilla. So you could do that. You know, it's kind of ugly. Um, but it does fill the thing. The problem with this is that you cannot put a rail out there anymore because technically these are snapping off of these. So instead of being two spaces out from the foundation, now technically we're out a third. Um, so no rail on the outside of this. So if you did it this way, not only would it be kind of weird um, with the shape, but also you'll have gaps in railings if you want to put railings out there. And, you know, so if I did this, maybe I just wouldn't put the railing all on the rest of them. But that's kind of what you're working with. So I'm going to go ahead now and pick these up. So if you are working with Structures Plus, one thing you can do that looks a little bit better is you can use the triangles and you bring it in like that. And then I put one more there just to fill in that hole. And then the triangles have a kind of a different set of rules and they will still allow you to place that, the rails on the end. So that could be how you work it. If you kept going around that way, then it would kind of create a pattern and it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Still not ideal, you know, but there, oh, I need another wood triangle ceiling. Let's grab one. Got a bunch in here. Okay. Now, because there is some slight variation in the spacing here, I found that when I did it over here, this will not work out. It will not do the same thing it did over there. Um, so that created a real quandary for me because then my only other option before would then be to just to crisscross the regular wood ceilings here and that um, then I wouldn't be able to put the railings so none of those were satisfying to me and I thought about it for a long time and I finally did figure something out so let me take this apart okay so what I would like to do is take another fence foundation and put it right here and come out again. Problem is the snapping is gonna get in your way. So you can't do it with the other pieces down. So if you wanna do this, you gotta take the rest of this apart first on either side of where you're working. And again, I'm being super careful so I don't lift up my, uh, my platform here i shouldn't even point the gun that direction don't point that thing okay all right so we got that up and then we're actually gonna need to take these up these i am definitely gonna do with the menu there's no way i'm pointing the demo gun down that way okay so we got those up Ooh, kimmy's ravager got killed hopefully folks are helping so then i just got to get this centered as best I can you know you can do it in all your different angles and try to figure out how to get it best you know hopefully I can do this without falling off <laughs> no promises and just using the little circles on them try to get them as close as possible and I'm gonna finick with it a bit because that's who I am All right, I think that's pretty close. It's pretty much covering over the holes to the same extent on either side of that little square knobby thing sticking up. And I've got this um, where the ends kind of end up in the middle of the wood beams on either side. So I'm gonna call that it. Now, when I go ahead to place the other stone fence foundations, I'm still gonna have snapping, but I can snap it off of that one there. 
So, and for some reason, sometimes the S Plus wants me to press G to disable straight snaps. Even when it, the ghost image is straight, sometimes it won't place. So now we have that, we can come on out again with all the pieces. So that would go there, that would go there, and then we've got, I believe that's the structures plus one, and this is the structures plus one. So then, now that we've got this foundation in the center, if I can find the snap for it, which is not either of those. It might have been easier if I put this one first, too. In fact, I might have not remembered that I have to. Oh, you know why it's not working yet? It's because I haven't done the things. You can't snap just off a fence foundation like that. The reason I can with these ones is because there's the other ceilings already in place for that. So what I'd have to do is put walls here. Uh, we'll just use this and then... I'm going to have one going down. Got to find the spot underneath it. Again, it would have been much easier if I just did this first. But there we go. That should be it. So now I should be able to find that snap right there. Um, and it's not perfect, but it's not too bad. And I may... Oh, no. We can do that. So there we go. That is imperfect but a lot better than the other ones it looks like i could have put that fence foundation out a little bit so we're gonna we can pick this up now and i can also pick up the wall underneath it um and you know it's a kind of design thing whether you want to leave that or not if i was working in vanilla i'd probably leave them because you can see that with the stone fence foundations you can see the little thing sticking out the bottom uh, with Structures Plus, you have this advantage that you have the visibility tool right here. So I can actually take this thing and I can do hide mode and I actually can hide all my fence foundations, which is just beautiful. Um, so you can clean all that up. They're still there, but you just can't see them anymore. Um, and just to demonstrate now, on this one, you can still place a railing so I can get a railing all the way around now and that's what it looks like so I think that's the method I'm gonna use I think that's as good as I'm gonna get and I'm gonna take that all the way around this platform and maybe all the way around this platform I was thinking I'd leave this one kind of as the launching platform because um, it's got the main uh, zip line coming down from below Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure actually what level of structure I want on these because, I, you know, it'd be fun to close it all in, but I also like the view. And so the more I build around me, the less I'm going to be able to see. My main goal is just to make it so that my animals can't run off. I did put a whole line of spiked walls up there, so guys are coming down less, but I still do get an occasional thing that drops down here that manages to spawn on the side of a cliff or something up there. And so I've been keeping my guys hitched up with the S plus hitching post. Again, not an option you'd have in vanilla. And I have found they are able to defend themselves reasonably well that way. But I would like it that if they're on here unhitched and they get in a fight, that they don't end up necessarily going off edge. So I think I would have to get it at least too high like that. So I might use uh, railings sort of as a wall here um, and maybe even go a little higher. And then I could also kind of use that as a window and then have a ceiling going off of that, which would be a pretty cool aesthetic. I can do it with glass. Glass does significantly affect your FPS, which is already kind of uh, difficult with all this stuff we have around us and we do have a few bases that are going to be able to render in but anyway i have got some design decisions to make but the first thing i wanted to do was just show you those little techniques and what you're working with and then you can decide how you want to do it from there 
anyway yeah so i've got more to do i've got decisions to make but i just wanted to show you guys those techniques that i'm working with and hopefully they can be helpful to you um and i've already gone oh you know about 27 minutes into this video already explaining that stuff so i think i'm going to leave it there and then in between episodes i'm going to work on what i'm going to do with the rest of it and then we'll come back next episode and i'll either show you what i've done and just kind of show it off a little bit or maybe i'll do some of it with you we'll yet to see but anyway i uh, hope this was helpful to you guys and I hope you have some fun building in the dark with your stone cliff platforms. <laughs> it seems to be dark a lot of the time. Ooh, I got to close that off with some walls right there. Uh, anyway, this is Monkey Puzzle with my fancy hat that I love so much. And thank you for watching until the end of this episode. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.